Yas Island in Abu Dhabi, the most fabulous Formula One track on Earth. For two days, it's home of the drivers in the Porsche GT3 Cup Middle East, the purest race series around. Today, you'll see a fierce battle for the league between two-time champion Abdelaziz Al Faisal and his rival Clement Schmidt. He went top. You will see joy. You will see pain. I don't know. We see grown men singing. And one man is really happy because he became a race driver at the age of 50. I dreamed my life and now I'm living my dream. Welcome to episode two of the Desert Racers. A quick reminder, on the first weekend in Bahrain, Clement Schmidt raced to a fantastic double victory, grabbing the lead in this season's championship. Now in Abu Dhabi, the reigning champion, Abdelaziz Al Faisal, needs to give everything to not fall completely behind. It's good to have someone who's experienced and you know that he's fast and maybe faster than you and then you can push and be faster than him. So if you, if you can win a race or two and be faster than him, then you, you've proved you, that, you know, you're, that you're going in the right direction as a benchmark or as a, as a sign that you're moving forward. Um, and only competition can do that. Abdelaziz Al Faisal is the most successful and popular race driver in the Middle East. He won two seasons of the Porsche GT3 Cup Series, raced in the 24 Hours of Le Mans twice, and he is the first athlete from Saudi Arabia to be sponsored by Red Bull. But Abdelaziz is not alone. His teammate and close friend, Faisal bin Laden, runs the team of the Saudi Falcons and is happy about the strong competition. I think it's a very good initiative uh, that other teams are you know, coming into the championship. Uh, it will create a competition, and competition makes any series stronger. People get excited, you know, people start to follow, but it's a challenge, and we're here for a challenge. I want to win. You know, I'm very cool in the car. Uh, even if someone overtakes me, I'm very cool. I, I try to be as clean as possible. Uh, I hate touching other cars. Uh, I like, you know, I treat my car as if I'm treating myself. I don't want it to get damaged. Psychologically, I think we have the advantage. And I hope we can keep that advantage and make the best out of it. Faisal bin Laden joined the Porsche GT3 Cup in the first season and became Rookie of the Year right away. He competed in the Dubai 24 Hours, but took a two-year break from racing to finish his studies for a Master of Business Administration. So I still have a long way to catch up, but the, the gap is closing. The two-year break is a weak point in the Falcons' fight for the team championship. Rivals Al Nabuda Racing scored more points with top racer Clemen Schmidt and the experienced hand Kareem Al-Azhari. The team is run by the number one Porsche dealer in the world, Al Nabuda Motors from Dubai. And the bosses came to have a look. I expect them to continue that good form. Well, we're hoping that we do the same here as well, keep the lead. Uh, but I think uh, I've been seeing the timings of the Saudi Falcon, the practice sessions, they've done some very, very, very tight timings. And so uh, I expect a tough race. Tomorrow's race day also puts a spotlight on two young racers who each made a spectacular entry into the GT3 Cup Challenge on the last race weekend. Christina Nielsen, the 22-year-old Danish lady taking up the boys in the desert heat, wants podium this time. But I know it's going to be really, really hard because we're so close. But um, we're doing the best we can and as long as I improve and, and do my best, I, I'm satisfied. <laughs> Zaid Ashkanani, the 18-year-old race wonder from Kuwait, doesn't talk much. But his father, only known as Abu Zaid, father of Zaid, is not shy to promote his son. 
he, he came to drive only and uh, to get experience, that's it. Then he found his, himself uh, with the big guys, driving with the big guys. It's a dream become true to see my son there. Walter Lechner, the Austrian race legend with more than 35 years experience on tracks around the world, runs the Porsche Middle East Challenge and has seen many talents. He's had 25 laps now, which is, uh, he did um, an imitation of the race, which, which is very good. He did very good, consistent times. We just checked his personal fitness because we didn't know whether he's going to do it. Those young kids out here, you know, they have to learn how, you know, much, you know, physical fitness you need to drive a car like that. Where will this all end? Walter almost whispers the possibilities. Honestly, he could go into F1. Tomorrow at Yas Marina Circuit will be a tough day. Two races with only three hours break in between. The two Falcons, Abdelaziz and Faisal, are on their way to the Yas Viceroy Hotel, the only hotel with an F1 racetrack built around it. They will have an early night to be fit for tomorrow's competition. The next morning, it's qualifying. The drivers try to get the fastest laps to get a good position in the starting grid of this short track, called the Northern Corkscrew. Christina Nielsen takes us on a tour. First, we're going through the famous very slippery tunnel um, where Sebastian Vettel and Alonso also had their fight. Here we are at the start. My wish is, of course, to have the highest start position as possible. First corner is important because it leads to an uphill point. When entering, it's important to get well over the curb as well as in the exit. When entering the second corner, you need a good turn in points. And here you're entering the third corner. Here you need to compromise because otherwise you won't get a good uh, entrance and exit from the fourth corner. The fourth corner is important for corner five and six. Without those two, you can't get a good straight. And if you do that well, you will have a good speed down the straight, which will minimize your lap time. Going down the straights, you're preparing for your braking point. Your braking point is absolute important here. Uh, your braking, you have to change it down with the goose. When you're turning around the corner, you need to find your good braking point, turn in, get a good apex. After that, have a good roll speed through the entire corner seven and eight. Corner nine, have a good balance in the car, hit the apex, boom, there you go. Down the straight, finish a good lap time. The Saudi Falcons are definitely in the lead with supplying the fans back home with news from the track. Live streaming uh, producer package. live. من الويب كامز اللي عنا يهون على السعودي فالكنز ويب سايت وسعودي فالكنز فيسبوك بيج. We definitely get a lot of requests and and we're always we have a team who's you know updating everyone on Facebook and on Twitter on Instagram with pictures stories everything. It's one of the most important things that we we try to to really focus on because it's hard for people to travel. Uh, especially that some of the weekends are different than the Saudi weekends. So, um, you know, we try to interact and try to, to keep them exposed with what we do. And, uh, and hopefully we do a good job in it. So, you know, the more aspects we can add, we try to. They have also invited the number one motorsports commentator, Faraz Nimri. His reporting on the qualifying are streamed live onto the web. In Al Nabuda Racing, Karim Al Azhari is uh, the fastest at the moment, with only just 8 thousandths of a second the gap between him and Abdul Aziz Al Faisal. Clemens, he's third, uh, the astonishing uh, Kuwaiti driver. The youngest driver in the championship, Zayt Ashkanani, is fourth at the moment. This is, will be a very tough uh, weekend for him because the circuit is completely new, not like Bahrain. He used to have a huge experience in Bahrain. 
but I believe he's a future champion. We saw in, in Bahrain in the first two rounds that the level of competition is very high also. But there was a fierce competition between uh, Clement Schmidt and Abdelaziz Al Faisal. It will not be uh, easy for him this year. After the qualifying, there is a big disappointment for the champ who is only on position two. I mean, uh, we tried our best and didn't expect, to be honest, they're going to be that fast, but it's a small circuit, so anyone can get fast. Um, yeah, it's just frustrating that we did a lot of good lap times in the end, so it means that we could have pulled at least half a second, if not a couple of tenths in the beginning of the session, so I don't know. And Christina's hopes for a podium seem very slim. She starts from position eight and is close to tears. No, everyone is so close. It's not because I'm, I'm far away from the other competitors, but... Um, it's difficult. We, are, we had to change the line a bit. And I was not uh, all satisfied with, with my own performance and the car in those corners that I had to change my line in. I'm gonna fight. Um, right now it's next qualifying, nothing else. On pole position, Al Nabuda's Karim Al Azari. His team celebrate him as if he's already won the championship. But first, there is the race. Of course it feels great, uh, especially here in my, uh, the Emirate where I was born. What a great thing to do. Uh, my first race with Porsche Middle East GT3 Challenge. Put it on pole. Feels great. Uh, my team did a fantastic job. Will reigning champion Abdulaziz Al Faisal from Saudi manage to catch up with championship leader Clement Schmidt? At start, Abdurrahman Al Thani from Qatar seems to fly away. Abdulaziz and Karim made the same start like me, and I thought it's a good start from the feeling, but okay, maybe it was a jump start from him. I think it was a jump start, so I don't know about the penalty, so we'll see. My front tires were a bit colder than I expected, so when I brake for the back straight here, the ass locked up a little bit. He did a small mistake on back straight. Okay. Uh, he locked up, went off. So I went, you know, I just took the normal line and uh, just stayed in front. And then I had a small battle with uh, Clemens, he was really pushing me hard. It was a tough race against Abdulaziz. I had a sm oversteer, small mistake, and then he tried to dive in. So I opened it, he went off, and then I took the normal racing line. And then he overtook me from the outside. One or two laps later, my gear lever was broken, so I couldn't shift down or up. and I had to get off the race. It's hard, but it can happen. I didn't do a very good start, as I hope. Uh, you know, the start, someone jump started, and uh, you know, you, you lose concentration. So from 11 to seven, yeah, plus five or plus four, which is good. So then it was just me at home, so. It was a good race, but it was long.
Kareem profits from his teammates' bad luck. Happy to get a podium. And because Abdurrahman is disqualified for his jump start, I'm happy with the results, even if I get a penalty. Shooting star Zaid from Kuwait <laughs> makes his first podium. And his father proud. Yeah, now podium third in the overall third, and first in silver, and also the rookie. So three trophy he will take to home today. <laughs> this is it. Abdul Aziz Mukhtar Faisal from Saudi Prospects. Abu Zaid celebrates his son's first podium by singing Kuwait's national anthem. Before the second race starts today, Zaid and his father are invited by a friend from Kuwait to relax in style and comfort between the competitions. <laughs> We're very proud of Zaid. Kuwait is starving for our young generation to produce. Today we see a young man with a lot of ambition and as a, as a, as a, as a country will come all behind him and support him. I used to go with my friends to Bahrain circuit and that day uh, there was a holiday for him in the school. He was in the secondary school. Then he said, I'd like to come with you to the circuit. He brought his camera just to take photos. Then we were, when we reached the circuit, while we are registering our name and make the application, I told the guy there, uh, write Zaid name, let him drive the, <laughs> the, the car. Then he started driving from morning till evening and he's driving like, uh, he starts from day, first day, uh, racing with other, other friends. He has the GT3 RS 9, uh, 9, uh, 9972 the latest one. So he's driving that. But of course, this race car is totally different than the RS he has. Manfred Ender is an Austrian businessman based in Qatar. He also drives a 911 in real life. And he also loves racing GT3 cup cars on the weekend. The major difference? Zaid is 18. Manfred is 51. He and his engineer Give us a look at race car versus street car. This is the 911, the S. It has around 400 horsepower and ours has 450. So uh, our car is, is, is uh, stronger. It's definitely much lighter because there is nothing inside. And also the doors, you know, these are real doors. The big difference actually is the door because it has no weight. It's, it's uh, plastic and inside it's, it's, it's nothing. It's just the, the seat and the electronics and this kind of things. On the road, if you drive, even if you drive fast, you don't reach the limit of the car. It's, it's, uh, if you reach the limit of the car, so then you made a very bad mistake. And uh, what about the air condition? <laughs> <laughs> they forgot it to fix it. <laughs> it's no air condition. <laughs> no, and you also cannot lower the windows. So no uh, electric windows, no. nothing. And the sound system? I didn't find it. I, I see a lot of switches, but uh, I did not find it. You, uh, you have to explain Actually, it. because of this open exhaust from this car, yeah. And a lot of noise from the gearbox and everything, the, the you can't hear anything. Of course, AC, what we don't have. <laughs> then you can also open the windows, what we cannot. And it was always my dream just to drive, to get the chance to drive a sports car, uh, uh, actually a race car, um, for a couple of laps. Uh, I did my first laps in, uh, in, in the race car, in the Porsche GT3 Cup car. I did in the age of 50. Uh, Walter Lechner, he gave me the chance to, to join the challenge. He even gave, gave me the trust uh, uh, to let me drive this car without having any experience. Uh, when we met in Bahrain, when we, after the meeting we had, I went out and I thought, how crazy is this guy, he's giving me a race car. And, and uh, after a while we spoke and he said, 
he's not actually the same. How crazy am I to give him a race car? One, one of the most important and expensive switches, it's a, the speed limiter. When the car comes into the pit lane, he has to press this button that the car is not quicker than 60 k's in the pit lane. If it's quicker, every k costs money. So, and he has to pay it on his own. Unfortunately. <laughs> he also told me the most important thing for me is get, making miles. He said, you go out with a, with a perfect car and you come back with a perfect car. So don't damage anything because when you damage, when you have a damage, you lose time. You cannot get experience. And that was a, a, a very good lesson for me, what he gave me. Meanwhile, back on the yacht, moored right next to the Formula One track, Zaid's father explains why he put so much time and money into his son's career. The program we made for Zaid is to make all the chances available for him to, to, to go for Formula One is easy for him. Every, everybody wants to do this, but uh, they cannot do because they don't have uh, Zaid. Now I have Zaid, I can do it. <laughs> And, and usually I, I experienced the, the, the Formula One here with all my friends on board. And I've done this before in, in, in Monte Carlo, and now we're doing it here in our area. We'll see Zaid passing by. <laughs> <laughs> he won't be signaling. <laughs> the second race of the day will be even more dramatic than the first. Saudi Falcon Abdelaziz Al Faisal claims pole position with both Al Nabuda racers Clement Schmidt and Karim Al Azari on second and third in the starting grid. I was pushing hard because Abdulaziz had new tires and I was on used tires. But he was right behind me and then uh, suddenly I came out of the corkscrew and then I can't see him. I pushed to uh, stay behind him yeah, and I pushed too hard. After the spin, the recovering of the positions was great fun because some of the guys are really fighting hard. Said was fighting the hardest. I was inside him and he was driving on the outside. Excellent race today, real race. Tough competition between the driver. Championship leader Clemens works his way through the field back to second place. Kareem and Yas newcomer Abdurrahman Al Thani from Qatar are in a scrap for position three. I managed to make the pass on the last corner and uh, I found an opening and just put it there. Maybe the other driver wasn't happy about it, so that's racing and I try to be as clean as possible. Finish fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Abdulaziz taking home a start to finish victory. The car felt really good. I think the conditions helped as well. So uh, I, we, we set the fastest lap out of the weekend. Abdurrahman Al Thani proved that he can reach the podium without a jump start. I'm happy that I can prove to everybody that um, it wasn't just a jump start that got me there. Dubai, we will go there and we will race and you will see a new day in that uh, set. After this action-packed race day, the champ is leading. Al Azari on position two. Clement Schmidt moves down to place three. But in the team championship, Al Nabuda has a lead over the Saudi Falcons, followed by Team Bahrain.
The next race weekend of the Porsche GT3 Cup Middle East is at Dubai Autodrome, the home of Al Nabuda, and the boss is clear on what he wants to see. All podiums in Dubai. Uh, it's their home turf, they know it like the back of their hand, they have to win there. Al Nabuda against Saudi Falcons, who'll be ahead in the race for the Cup. Will young Abdurrahman Al Thani make it to the podium again? And will Christina get her form back? Join us for the next episode of the Desert Racers.